What's going on, my friends, my family, my fellow gamers? This is your boy, Porter Rock 77 coming back at you with another video. Check out the description box. You'll see the link to my Twitter. Hit me up with a follow so we could continue the conversation. And of course, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Hope you stick around by hitting the subscribe button and don't forget to hit that bell for notifications. On to today's topic. Now, I wish I could reference a source to this topic, but I'm just hearing rumblings and rumors. Um, apparently some YouTube videos are out. I haven't seen them myself. Uh, but I digested the information that's being passed and the information is rumors that Sony is getting ready to drop and discontinue the PlayStation 4 Slim and only sell the PS4 Pro from here on out up until next gen. And also they'll drop the price of the Pro to what the baseline Slim is, which is like $299 or something. So pretty much they'll drop the Slim completely and only sell a $299 Pro. Now, my opinion on that plan, completely asinine. Terrible idea. It's absolutely terrible. It's absolutely abysmal. I don't know what Sony's thinking at all. And of course, they're the multi-billion dollar corporation, stuff like that. I'm not. But hear me out. This is why I think it's a terrible idea. All right? Number one, as I demonstrated Cheaper consoles always outsell the more expensive console, right? So let me ask you this. In 2018, who is Sony trying to sell a $299 console to? Or even, let's say Black Friday comes, they have a special Black Friday deal where a, a, a pro is $250. Who are they selling it to? Now, of course, people are going to say, and I already know the reaction, but Port Rock, it's a 4K machine, HDR. That's an awesome price for, for $299,250. That's, that's actually a great deal. Well, let me ask you this. If people already wanted to pay $299 for consoles, don't you think they would have done it already before 2018? What you guys don't understand is this Pro, $299 Pro, is actually a great deal for those who want to upgrade, you know, people who haven't bought a PS4 yet are not going to start five years later at $300. They could have been bought. It. They could have bought a PS4 Slim last year for what? 200 bucks with a $50 um, GameStop card. And they didn't. Do you want to know why the PS2 sold 150 million? Because at what point that thing I think it was $99. That's how low it got to when they released the PS4, PS2 Mini. $99. And before that, it was $150. You know how many people went out and got a PS2 for $150? It's, so, it's like extremely affordable to the point that now you're hitting the low income bracket. The bracket that is usually the, the ones who buy their consoles towards the end of the generation because they can't afford $300 consoles, you know, which is perfectly fine. I mean, they get it at $150, $125, $99. There's nothing wrong with that. And then they get to play an immense five years worth, six years worth of backlog titles, and they will keep playing that until the next generation towards the end. They jump onto that. See, that's the cycle. See, every phase of console generation has its cycles of demographic in the beginning you got the super hardcore that will pay premium price right then you got you know the hardcore that's not day one but they love gaming but they're gonna wait a year or two to the library develops price drops or maybe they don't want the first gen consoles because you know warranty you know breaks or whatever they they rather have like the second generation consoles come through you know what i'm saying not second generation but you know the second batch too right but as the generation of console goes down the bracket, pretty much the financial bracket, gets lower and lower as the console gets cheaper, you know? So as the console gets cheaper, it attracts more and more people because it's hitting a price range. And every price range that it drops is new gamers that add on. And that's what Sony needs to focus on with the PS4. Get more gamers. Selling a Pro 299 is not going to attract new gamers. They're not going to pay $299 Five years later, and I'm talking new gamers, new gamers, not the old gamers, you know, make no mistake. Selling a pro 
to a to a PlayStation owner for an upgrade doesn't really do anything for Sony. It does nothing. Why? Let me give you an example. So of course I got I got plenty of digital games. I got Spider Man digital whatever. But here we go. I got a physical game, right? This is Horizon Dawn, Detroit. You see games, right? Fly by games, right? So now let's say Sony, you know, drops the slim and they sell the pro for two ninety nine this holiday season, right? And my wife is like, oh wow, pro for two ninety nine. You know why? I think my husband's gonna like this. So she prize she surprises me for Christmas with a PS4 Pro, right? What did Sony get out? And I'm not saying I care for Sony in the sense of burning that money, but I just follow me along. What does Sony get out of that deal? Well, they get a hardware sale, right? But are they gonna get more game sales? No. Because I'm already buying games with the PlayStation already got all of us already buying games if you own a slim you already are purchasing you already purchased games it's not like I'm gonna start buying two copies now that I got a pro it's still gonna be the one copy that I always buy you understand what I'm saying now compare that if you keep the slim right sell it for 150 bucks sure drop the pro to 299 if that's what you want to do but keep the slim 150 bucks you're gonna get new gamers Brand new gamers that don't own a PlayStation, whether they're Switch, PC, Nintendo, or they just haven't jumped on this gen because they're waiting for the $150 price point. Now you get new gamers. And new gamers are going to buy, you know, Horizon Zero Dawn, you could probably get it for 20 bucks. Uncharted, you probably could get it for 15 bucks, 10 bucks, whatever. They're going to buy these games. Now, this is the part I care about. When they buy these games, they become more successful, which means sequels. For me, for us, we get sequels. We want these games to sell. But we're not going to rebuy these games because we bought a pro. We already own them. We need new gamers to buy these games. We need new gamers, right? We need new gamers, right? To go buy Bloodborne. We need new gamers to buy Bloodborne. Because the gamers are already out on PlayStation, they either already bought it or they're not interested. It's already a done deal. But if you get a new fresh batch of gamers, they're going to look back at the catalog. They're going to look at everything that's been released. They're going to look at the Uncharted. They're going to look at, you know, Bloodborne. They're going to look at Ratchet and Clank. They're going to look at, you know, even Gran Turismo Sport. They're going to look at a backlog of titles and they will buy these games because they're cheap. They're affordable. They buy a $150 console and they buy 10 $15 games. A sell's a sell. But if you get rid of the slim, you're not gonna get new gamers. New gamers are not gonna pay $299 five years later. It, it wouldn't even make sense to. I wouldn't even recommend. If there's a new game that came out here, right? I, I swear to God, if someone went on Twitter right now, right? And there was no slim available. I mean, they're not even a used one. You can't get it anywhere. Not eBay or nothing, right? And a new gamer approached me and said, Hey, Porter, I, yo, I'm thinking of jumping on getting a PlayStation this gen. I will tell them, don't even bother. And they'll be like, what? Why? Chances are the new PlayStation 5 is coming out and the Pro is $300. For an extra $100 or $200, you are going to get a brand new PlayStation 5 and it'll probably be backwards compatible with all these PlayStation 4 games. Just wait another year, bro. Don't even waste your time getting a Pro. Don't. You're wasting your $300. Chances are you get a new PS5 next year or maybe even 2020. Just wait it out. It's not worth paying $300 for a pro right now. It's, if, I'm going to be honest. It's really not worth paying $300 for a pro right now. It's just not. Especially if a new PlayStation 5 comes out. Yo, think about this. What if Sony pulls a great console, great powerful console for 400 bucks? Only 100 bucks extra than a pro and you bought a pro this year for 300 tell me you wouldn't be salty as fuck if you would have just waited a year and an extra hundred dollars would have gotten you a next generation console and chances are these games will be backwards compatible because it's x86 architecture and oh man it would be crazy if they do enhancements for the playstation 5 you motherfuckers will be salty that's why i honestly couldn't recommend somebody to get a pro i i couldn't not in good conscience 
Because if a year passes by and a five comes out, then they'll look back at me like, damn, bro. I could have waited a year and I would have gladly spent the extra 100 200 on a brand new next generation platform, which is going to have exclusives you can't play on the Pro anyway. Let's be honest. You want new gamers to jump on a $150 PlayStation 4 Slim. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what platform you're on, the Pro or the Slim, a game sells a game sells. Right? You want new gamers. So it's ridiculous. Terrible idea. I hope the rumor is not true. I think it's absolutely stupid. You know what I'm saying? Use the Slim to break into a new demographic that cannot afford 200 plus consoles. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's not, I'm not going to insult people's money and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? If you know Sony did it with the PS2. Again, at one point that thing was $99. How do you think it sold 150 million? It didn't sell 150 million by constantly staying at 299. You know, Sony, stay with the slim. Engage new members. You know what I'm saying? Give them the ability, give them the opportunity to play your games. And here's the best part. You still could drop the Pro to $299. One doesn't have to do anything with the other. So anyway, that's my thought. Let me know what you think about this. You know, do you agree? Should Sony get rid of the Slim? And if so, why? Because you still got your Pro. It's not going to impact, you know. And next generation is right around the corner. So is the Pro really worth it at this point in time? Especially if they announce a new console next year? You let me know what you think. Again, if you're new to the channel... Hit me up, you know what I'm saying, on Twitter, subscribe, notification. Everybody hit the like button, please, you know what I'm saying? So that way we can get this video trending. And then um, soon, tomorrow, the next day, I'm going to drop a Spider-Man review video, all right? But anyway, you guys take care. This is your boy, Porter Rock 77 and I'm out. Peace.